very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure to follow the uh, honourable member for Ludlow, and I agree with him that um, there's an interesting development that we can, we can look at in terms of the uh, hydrogen uh, possibilities of using hydrogen in our uh, fuel networks. Um, I last had the opportunity to uh, speak about this issue in February when we had the first main chamber debate on climate change in two years. It was only a short backbench debate on net zero emissions and it remains disappointing that it's only backbenchers and the Labour Party that are instigating debates on this yeah, crucial yeah, issue yeah, and not the exactly. government. Um, I spoke about the devastating changes I'd seen in the Great Barrier Reef in my two visits, the first 25 years ago and secondly a couple of years ago. I congratulated the organisers of the Glastonbury Festival for their decision to ban plastic bottles and in passing I'd encourage other festival organisers to do the same. And I talked about giving up my car to try and rely more on public transport and cycling. So with the limited time available, I'm not going to repeat those remarks, but I'm pleased to support Labour's challenge to the government to declare an environment and climate emergency. It's a declaration to convey the gravity of where we're at with climate change. It's a recognition that we are now left with a limited window of time to mitigate the damage we've done. And the Leader of the Opposition uh, laid out the scale of the crisis very compre comprehensively in his opening speech. Um, and it's an invitation to other governments to do the same. And no, no other government has, has declared a climate emergency. So it would make the UK a world leader, just as the last Labour government led the world in facet, passing the first binding Climate Change Act. And it's a signal to the extension rebe rebellion protesters, to the striking school children, and to the t young people I speak to in schools in my constituency that we are listening and that we will act with, emerge, with, with urgency. And it is urgent action that we need. And acting in the context of a climate emergency means we've got to set ambitious goals and achieve them with commitment and motivation. And what's going on in Manchester is a good example of what the action you can take at a local level if you're serious about your green ambitions. Last year, Manchester held its first Green Summit and launched the first city region-wide plan to drive down single-use plastics. And just uh, over a month ago, we had the second summit uh, focusing on the five-year environment plan. Now, Greater Manchester generates roughly 3.6% of our total UK CO2 emissions, so we've ac acknowledged our responsibility to make our contribution to meeting targets, and it's a cross-cutting approach that recognises and demonstrates the range of actions that uh, we need to take. So looking at how to reduce CO2 emissions, um, as well as uh, improving air quality as part of our transport plan, um, plans for new building developments to be zero carbon by 2028 and for existing housing to be retrofitted to increase efficiency, a big econom economic opportunity. Uh, extensive plans to create clean air zones and tackle nitrogen dioxide exceedances. Um, all working towards our ambition to make Manchester a carbon neutral city by 2038, a suitably ambitious goal for the city that started the first industrial revolution and needs to be a leader in the next industrial revolution, the green industrial revolution. Um, I'd love to be able to talk, I don't have the time, but I'd love to be able to talk about, the, about climate change and the importance of climate change as a social justice issue, not just because it disproportionately affects the most marginalised in our society, it's often the poorest families who live in urban areas with high levels of pollution, <laughs> But the biggest injustice of all is it that the poorer countries that contributed less to global warming are being disproportionately hit yeah. by its effects. Yeah. People living in the global south already having their lives torn apart because of the actions we've done in the past. Yeah. Um, the UK has a moral obligation to set and reach ambitious carbon emissions targets, not just for our people's health and, uh, and environment, to offset our global contribution. And as a wealthy nation, we also have to uh, offer financial support for climate mitigation and adaption efforts by countries in the global south who are affected by extreme weather events. Now, I regularly visit local schools, and overwhelmingly young people want to raise two issues, climate change and plastic pollution. And I, when I speak to young people, I say we all have to take our responsibility to play our part, whether that's eating less meat, reducing our car and plane journeys, or avoiding single-use plastics. But we have to match that individual ambition with legislation to tackle this issue as a nation. And that's why we urgently need to pass legislation to update the Climate Change Act. There are lots of, uh, of actions we need to take that have been outlined by other honourable and right honourable members. There is a massive opportunity, as the right, my right honourable friend in Doncaster North has, has uh, indicated in this. We need to take action, but let, let this declaration today be a spur for that action. Let's declare that environment and climate emergency today. Yeah. 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 Yeah.